time, and he has a knife in his hand. So, Mark, it sounds like this all started as a domestic call, right? What more do we know about Flores? Right. Well, it began as a domestic call. Officer, or de deputies were dispatched to um, the scene around 11.30 a.m. on Friday. Now, they arrived and found uh, a woman with a gash in her head holding a baby who may have also been injured, um, and reports indicate that Flores was outside and was armed with a knife at the time. Um, apparently, there was a lengthy confrontation prior to the actual shooting that is not seen in the video that was played by our local TV. Um, but exactly what happened in the time leading up to shots being fired is still unclear at this point. Right. And it says right there, suspect threatened suicide by cop. There is this insane narrative of pinning up against each other, the police, and obviously anyone pretty much in the world right now. There's, there's so much hatred towards the cops. And on the flip side, there's so much hatred from the cops and cop supporters against protesters or activists or whatever you want to call them. I think really people that kill anyone are just savages, period, whether they're a cop or a citizen. It does not really matter. But all this does is pin people up against each other. And then we have the issue of transgendered students that also ties into this media facade. The media loves to talk about transgendered issues. They don't love to talk about the economy and jobs collapsing all over the place, and the Dow playing a yo-yo because it's completely manipulated. Watch as the Dow crashes and silver goes down at the same time, which historically makes no sense, and gold goes down. It's completely manipulated, completely corrupt, and you have people making billions and billions of dollars every time it goes down, every time it goes up, because they know how to play the system, and we are all getting screwed. But the media loves to talk about bathroom access for transgendered teen kids. I mean, hey, that's, that's key, guys. Let's not talk about anything else. Let's not even talk about the illegal immigration issues, which are being blown up and made insane. Let's not talk about anything. Transgendered bathrooms. Oh, my God. Right? So I want to play for you a video about Missouri teenagers protesting a transgender student's use of the girl's bathroom. And this is what the media focuses on. This is the facade. This is this DMZ facade that I was talking about in North Korea, where the media acts like they can spin the news. But guess what? The alternative media is winning and we're taking it away from transgendered bathrooms and this nonsense of fake racism that they keep pushing on us to make us hate each other. Let's play this Missouri teenagers protest transgender students use of girls bathroom right now. I love that I had so many people out there that went to counteract the people who walked out Around 200 walked out of class for nearly two hours at Hillsborough High School, 30 to 40, showing their support for senior Lila Perry to use the girls' locker room during gym. There is a lot of ignorance. I don't, they are claiming that they're uncomfortable. I don't believe for a second they are. I think this is pure and simple bigotry. Lila Perry was born a boy, but says she identified as a woman since age 13. Yeah, like, the Down is, the street like, from the school, our... two men who claimed they had relatives at the high school held signs. Boys need to have their own locker room. Girls need to have their own locker room. If somebody has mixed feelings where they are, they need to have their own also. Lila says school officials have been very accommodating, understanding, and compliant with Title IX federal law. To solve the controversy, they offered her a private gender-neutral restroom. She turned it down. I wasn't hurting anyone, and I didn't want to feel segregated out. I didn't want to be in the gender-neutral bathroom. I wanted to be... I am a girl. I shouldn't have to be pushed away and just off to another bathroom. How dare that one guy, by the way, reference basic biology and say that he was born a boy. Look, I love everyone. I don't care. I believe Alex doesn't care either. Who cares? Anyone could be transgendered. That's not the issue. That is not the matter. But forcing it and making it the number one topic in the media and saying we all should just let transgender people walk all over us. Everyone has the same rights. Next up, Alex Jones has a powerful message for Louis Farrakhan that is coming up in the next segment. Do not miss it. We'll be back in two minutes with a message for Louis Farrakhan. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, September 4th, 2015 edition. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex Jones. And coming up, Alex's powerful message to Louis Farrakhan. And we're going to break down what exactly Louis Farrakhan is up to. First and foremost, we're going to cover how Iran is going to get $150 billion. And then they turn around and say that they're getting prepared to overthrow Israel. And how they're promising to set fire to United States interests. And what Biden has to say on that, of all people. First, 
This segment of The Alex Jones Show is brought to you by the super high quality nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com and on InfoWarsStore.com. Over 500 products, I believe, on the InfoWars store. Really, the gold standard, the Lamborghini of InfoWars Life, I like to say, is the Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, keyword nascent, ultra true, pure nascent iodine. And it's from between 8 and 12,000 feet beneath the uh, ground's uh, earth surface. And we have a drill that actually goes down there and gets, it's, it sounds like some type of like fantasy novel or something. It's, it's, it's totally insane. A drill that goes down about 8 to 10, uh, 12,000 feet, it drills out purple crystals purple salt crystals, and then from that, the purest form. So, you know, we try to make sure we test it for radiation and everything. It's not from the ocean. It's from these purple crystals. We extract the iodine from there in the purest source and put it in a glycerin base so it doesn't taste terrible. It actually tastes not bad at all. It tastes good. And you can put it in your protein shake. You can even take it right on the tongue or put it in water. I take it on the tongue. Alex likes it in water. InfoWars Life Survival Shield, available on InfoWarsLife.com. And I want to read a review on X2. This is from Patriot at, in Portland, Oregon. I take this product every morning. It tastes great. I agree. Anyone who uses these products will feel a change take place in mind and body. It is very real. Brock from Du Bois says, I used this directed on the bottle and it completely blew me away. I have never had such dramatic results from any supplements I've taken. I feel alert and more energy, just an overall feeling of well-being. I am on my soapbox shouting its praises to everyone I know. Thank you and great job. Thank you, Brock. I am on my soapbox shouting its praises too because it's an awesome product. Anyway, now we're going to get into some of this Iran news. First and foremost, I want to play this clip from Joe Biden on what he has to say, how it's understandable. It's, it's understandable that if we give $150 billion to Iran, they probably use it for terrorist activities. That's fine. So let's play this video. The way I look at it, the sanctions relief from this deal is a second piece, and it goes to the second issue mostly. Well, Joe, even if, even if I believed you were able to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, you're going to give them a whole lot of money, Joe boy, <laughs> and they're going to go out and do more of the bad things they're doing now, do it more efficiently and threaten our friends in an existential way because they'll have so much more money and capacity. Totally legitimate argument and concern. Totally legitimate argument and concern that Iran might do something bad with the $150 billion we're giving them. Well, how about this headline from the Washington Free Beacon? Iran promises to set fire to U.S. interests. A senior Iranian military official has vowed to, quote, unquote, set fire to all U.S. interests in the region and maintained that the Islamic Republic welcomes war with America, according to regional reports demonstrating that Tehran is still committed to fighting the United States. And then we have a nice little one here. Iran thumbs nose at U.S. even as Obama rallies support for a nuke deal. Eat from Fox News. Even as President Obama was securing the Senate support necessary to assure passage of the nuclear deal with Iran, Tehran's top defense officials were scoffing at U.S. claims that the pact will restrict the Islamic Republic's military ambitions. That's right. Well, hey, we'll sign a deal with you. Then we'll just destroy you. We'll just completely wipe out all your assets. And guess what also they're going to do? This is from PJ Media. They're also going to apparently overthrow Israel. This is from the Iran commander, quote, we're getting prepared to overthrow Israel. As the White House secured their last needed vote to block a veto override in the Senate on the nuclear deal, Iran unleashed a double pronged attack, vowed to block inspector access to some sites and vowing to continue preparations to destroy Israel. Iranian Defense Minister Brigadier General Hussein Dakan said today that the International Atomic Energy Agency, which linked confidential deals to Tehran, that Congress has not been able to see would not be able to see all the facilities that it wants to. And he says, Iran does not plan to issue permission for the IEA to inspect every site. So that's fine. We'll make a deal with them. We'll give them $150 billion. Joe Biden says they'll probably use it for bad. And hey, they can't see their media uh, nuclear sites or anything. Hey, we're coming back. And in this next segment, we are premiering the powerful message from Alex Jones to Louis Farrakhan. You don't want to miss this one. This is going to be a good one. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones So Sorry about that. Alex has a message that we're going to premiere right now 
to Louis Farrakhan. It's really a balanced take on the whole issue because Farrakhan says a lot of good stuff too. And Alex is actually going to call in after this video premieres, live on air, exclusive video right now, and break down some key points he forgot to mention as well. Now, I really think this video is a fair take on it because, like I just said, Farrakhan said some good things, but there's also some headlines like this one. Quote, stalk and kill them, Farrakhan says, calling for 10,000 volunteers to reportedly kill whites. And from this article, it says, this is a quote from Farrakhan from the conservative post, retaliation is a prescription from God to calm the breasts of those children who have been slain. So if the federal government will not intercede in our affairs, then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stalk them and kill them and let the pain, feel the pain of death that we are feeling. It also ties into this article we covered earlier. Man faces charges after tweeting, kill all white people in town. And he basically said, tonight we purge, kill all the white people in the town of La Plata. So this is what's happening after these comments. Let's go to Alex's video and see what's going on. And I saw a Mr. Alex Jones on television recently with Pierce Morgan of CNN. And he said, before we allow you to take our guns from us, 1776 will play out again. Alex Jones here with a message to Louis Farrakhan and the followers of the Nation of Islam. I've been on air for 20 years, and I have followed your work intently. And I'll be honest with you. I admire a lot of the aspects of what your movement promotes and the courage that you've had and what you've done. But you are somewhat of an enigma. There's the reports about the connection to the Nation of Islam and what happened to Malcolm X. I don't believe the establishment, but I also don't believe other groups. I don't know what the truth is there. Uh, there's also some of the aggressive militaristic rhetoric, uh, and I have concerns about that. I'm gonna speak to that here in just a moment. But at the end of the day, what I do admire is someone standing up and saying, we should spend money in our own community. We should build ourselves up. We shouldn't use the drugs that the establishment ships in for social engineering. Uh, we should be strong men and take care of our wives and children. Uh, we should reject this whole gangster culture. The fact that the Nation of Islam has fought against the CIA's weaponization of hip hop and the whole uh, cop killing culture, that's something that's been amazing. Uh, before I knew about vaccines being deadly and, and seeing the facts and the documents, uh, the uh, Nation of Islam newspaper was reporting on it 30 years ago and having scientists and people on uh, and exposing it. Um, the Nation of Islam has exposed the fact that HIV is a weaponized, race-specific bioweapon. And it is a fact that it, Africans contracted at a much higher rate than Northern Europeans. It's very hard for Northern Europeans. That's in the medical literature to get it. I've talked to scientists to admit it. I remember hearing this from doctors back in the 90s, sitting around talking to my dad, who's a retired physician. That's the real big agenda. And when Louis Farrakhan talks about the depopulation agenda, uh, the minimum sentencing agenda, uh, all of this stuff is absolutely true. And I can say I support that. Um, Louis Farrakhan can believe what he wants to believe when he gets into mother wheels and Elijah Muhammad up in space and all this stuff. Uh, it's, it's, to me, even if that was true and you believe it, it's discrediting, I think, to mix it in with all these other true things that are happening. If I wanted to discredit the important message you're putting out, I would mix that in. I notice I've not been hearing that rhetoric for about 10, 15 years, so maybe you figured that out. And I'm not here lecturing you. You're, you're probably smarter than I am. Okay, you're a very talented orator, uh, speaker, everything. Uh, so I'm not here telling you stuff you don't obviously know. That said, the speech you gave a month ago, and I think we've seen what's happened since then, um, is very thinly veiled. You know, if they kill us, we go out and we, we kill them. We basically creep up on them. The Quran teaches persecution is worse than slaughter. Yes, sir. Then it says retaliation is prescribed in matters of the slain. 
Retaliation is a prescription from God. 